company founder, best-selling author, Dan Geltrude. Um, let's get a sense, Dan, where you think the markets are standing on this. They're betwixt and between. They run up you know, a little bit, then they run down, but it's pretty volatile. How do you play it? It is, and it's pretty hard to figure out. I actually think, I know you hate to give him credit, but Charlie Gasparino uh, made a good point before, and he said that he thinks... I give Charlie credit. Yeah, what are you oh, talking okay. about? You think I go against the Italians? <laughs> huh? yeah, that's, you shouldn't that's, that's be. That's my point. No, but I think he made a good point related to, he said, Mike Pence should be out there every, every day, day giving updates because... If, if he's not doing that, he's allowing the market to fill in the blanks, and that's dangerous territory. We saw how the market was reacting to China trade. Literally, it was uncanny how it would go up and down based upon that news. I think this administration has to take control of the information, being transparent, and letting everybody know what's going on. And I think when that starts to happen, the markets will start to calm down. Yeah, they just need clarity or something to, to go on. And Lauren, anyway... He was saying, I mean, uh, for, for the Dow and the S&P, this is something we've not seen, it's certainly in the case of the S&P, if it holds it, since 1933. I mean, that fast, the 10% correction. Uh, and I know we got to close to 20% in December 18 with the S&P and, and, and Nasdaq in the middle of that rate hike fear and, and, and that the Fed was overdoing it. But it, it, it does the, 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 the quickness of it startle you. Yeah, that was absolutely disturbing, Neil. I was actually surprised how quickly the market was, I'll say, overreacting. If there was going to be a correction, let the correction be based upon something that's tangible, right. as opposed to, well, we're going towards a pandemic, no one knows where, now it's in Italy, and it's in South Korea, and, and, yeah. and this person, you know, the, the information was so fractured, I think the market actually got emotional and overreacted. I really anticipated anticipate that the market is going to calm down and what we saw over the last three days of these wild swings, I really think that they're going to come we'll back separate. into line. The market's been firing people for just sneezing at <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going to tolerate any no. germ warfare Done. in my office right. so that we're clear. Yeah. You know what I think it is though, can we really fault uh, companies and organizations for, for exercising an overabundance no. of caution? Absolutely. Uh, I think we're actually playing it the right way, Neil. The, the real issue is is the fear yeah. and the panic well, that's going an along effect of with it. Yeah. doing the right thing. Right, doing the right thing. So, right. so you're doing the right thing, and economically it's hurting us. Right. God yeah. forbid a business should have to take blame for something. You just do yours, protect well, <laughs> Yes, I'm going to protect my uh, organization there at all go. costs. There we yeah. go, there we go. Uh, and all those fired sneezing and coughing employees. I'm kidding, he did not do that. <laughs> but I sneezed in my office. People were saying, what's wrong? Yeah. And Dan Geltrude. Uh, Dan, I, I never like, and Connell and I often talk about this, going tick for tick and whatever the market's doing any second. But they do cling to whatever the latest news is on this virus. It's fascinating. Better it is, stocks bid up. Worse it is, stocks go down. That, that, we've not broken that. No, we haven't. And we're going to have to see what the stream of information coming forward is going to be. And that's really going to dictate how the market reacts. But as, as we've been saying, the most important aspect here is that there is transparency through all of this. I think the market is OK with bad news as long as they're not surprised by the bad news. Yeah. That's really the issue. Look, we already know that this is a potential pandemic the market understands that but they want to know what's happening they don't want to hear all of a sudden that you know there's 10,000 cases in Europe out of nowhere and no one saw it coming that's really what will upset the market and I think we're getting to the point where everyone realizes that based upon what's happened in the last three days that we need to have continuous information flowing from the administration yeah. so I would actually not say something no, like that no, <laughs> but, but look I think I think that the White House has to be concerned <clears throat> about the virus for obvious reasons for for the health and benefit of the American people but listen there are political consequences yeah, to be paid if the market goes <clears throat> down because he's always been cheering about the market and now he's got to deal with what's happening well, on just the other. in other words taking executive powers to get ahead of a crisis 
What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good move by, uh, for the president to do. One, it's going to benefit him politically in terms of taking charge and doing the right things, taking control of the situation. But from a standpoint of us, we were talking about somebody has to be the center of this and make sure that we're really having this virus. I'm just trying to think. The last president to do that was probably FDR, right after World War, II, or right after Pearl Harbor, where he repositioned the auto companies and you're going to be making. You know, tanks, tanks and weapons right now, right? right? And then they, they were fine with it. They did it, but no. I actually don't think that it will, Neil. I, you know, we so now you're doing... agreeing with me too. Two yes, hours I, into yes, the show. I, let me yeah. let me go on record. I take agree note, with Neil. Oh, wow. no, I, I agree uh, with Neil yeah. here unequivocally. <laughs> uh, no, I I don't look. If we look at what's going on in Europe and some other countries around the world that are struggling economically, they have negative interest rates. Right. So that is not the answer to every problem. We're so low right now. Incredible. I don't think it I don't think it's the time to have to go to that. I know President Trump is already on that issue in terms of the Fed's got to come down. I, I just think we wait and see a little bit. I don't think that's the answer. Do young people look at low rates like this and say, I'm in? Why are you looking at me? He's young, right? <laughs> 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 so why are you not looking at me? He could be your big brother. I could be your father. <laughs> Anne could be your grandfather. <laughs> yeah. So what do you, what do you, does it make a difference for young people when they hear, wow, look at these rates? I, you know, I'm not the best to answer this question because I mostly work in politics. Um, <laughs> wow, but... someone's being cautious. <laughs> 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 Oh, look at the time. Yeah, look at the time. <laughs> no, you were great. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but Gramps would have been tougher. Would have been tougher. All right, don't forget uh, Tim Cook uh, looking at all these developments of coronavirus and a lot more. A little